Do you feel frustrated, unprepared, confused, or lost? Well, it's time to be happy because Geography World Channel is here to help. I see the comments and requests and I will act on them. Please remember to follow Geography World channel on Instagram and Facebook using the link shown on the screen. Please remember to like, share with your friends and subscribe. For person wishing to contact me privately, you may email me at geographyworld100 at gmail.com. The link will be posted below. Welcome back to Geography World Channel. For this video, I'll be looking at the May June 2017 Key Geography Paper 2. Now, for this video, I'll be looking at the answers for question 3 that looks at module 2. Let me go to question 3. Now, question 3 it shows us a table which shows the characteristics of River X and where to answer the questions that follow. So in the first column, we have the stream order. The second column, we had the number of stream segments. And in the third column, we have the total length of the stream segment. And it's in kilometers. Now, first question asks that we calculate the verification ratio for River X. Now, in order for us to calculate the verification ratio, what we'll have to do is that we'll have to divide 7 into 14, which goes 2, 2 into 7, which goes 3.5, and two, 1 into 2, which goes 2. And what we'll have to do now is that we'll have to add. So 14 and 7 gave us 2 plus 3.5 plus 2, and we'll get 7.5. And then because we have 3, we'd have to divide by 3. We did 3 division, we divide by 3. So that's 7.5 divided by 3 would give us 2.5. So the verification ratio for River X is 2.5. See the slider following with the information. Part B. Or part two, sorry, asks us to calculate the drainage density of the river basin. Now, the formula for the river, the density of the river basin, is the total length of the streams over the area of the basin. So we're going to add 10 and 20, that's 30, plus 5 and 5, that's 40. So the total length of the stream is 40, and the area is 80 kilometers square. So that's 80, 40 over 80. And once you do that, you should get 0 0.5 kilometers. So the, the total <coughs> dense drainage density is 0 0.5 kilometers. You can look at the slide that follows with the working out. Question B asks us to explain how rejuvenation affects the cross profile of the river. Now, rejuvenation it occurs when the river's speed and erosive power increases, resulting in an increase in the downward erosion or vertical erosion. Now, it happens at a renewed period of vertical erosion to achieve a new and a lower base level. Now, the river is always attempting to reach a state of dynamic equilibrium where there is a balance between the rate of erosion and the deposition. Now, in reality, a river is rarely, if ever, in a state of dynamic equilibrium. So the changes in the discharge and the sediment load are constantly changing the profile of the river. Now, when the river when the sea level falls in relation to the sea, 
we have a land that emerges from the sea. So the land from the sea steepens the river gradient, and this thus increases the river erosive power or the erosional power. Now, thus it gives a partially it gives the river partially graded profile, which includes changes in the cross profile of the river in the lower course, such as you have the kick point. You have the inside meander, you have the river terrace, and you have waterfalls develop in the lower course of the river. Now, the next point is basically a sharp break of, of the slope in the smooth, concave, long profile of a river, which is usually marked by the presence of a waterfall or a series of rapids. The inside meander are sweeping bends in a river where lateral erosion is greater than the vertical erosion and the river terrace are all flood plains left perched above the current flood plains. So you move on to section C. Question C has us explain two characteristics of limestone rocks that influence the development of large-scale surface features. Now, surface features are the features that are formed on the top on the Earth's surface that you can see. Now, because of the chemical composition of the limestone, meaning the limestone has 80% calcium carbonate and it's on the surface, once the rainfall, the top part of the limestone is exposed to the rainfall so it makes it very very easy for chemical weathering to take place thus the formation of surface features the distinct joints and cracks and the layers along the bedding plane makes it also easy for chemical weathering to take place because the, the, the layers and the joints um, they make it easier for water to seep through the limestone rock so that's another um Another characteristics of limestone, and we also look at the permeability of the rock. It remember the limestone makes it it's pretty permeable, so it allows water to easily seep through it. So because of the permeability of the limestone, it helps influence the development of the large scale surface features that we have. Now, question D. Ask us to write an essay on the influence of climate change on the formation of coral reef and we're to include a well illustrated diagram. Now, the influence of climate change on the formation of coral reef. Now, climate change is something that is affecting us in one way or another. Some of the effects are the effects are not that damning as yet, but they are getting there. Now, with climate change come an increase in the world's temperature. Now, remember that coral reefs, they require a certain amount of temperature. If you recall the amount required for coral reefs to be formed, put it in the comment section below. The coral reef requires a certain amount of temperature to be Form now with the increase in temperature, the sea, the ocean water, the seawater will become too warm for corals to actually form. What will happen is that the corals will become bleached, right? With the melting of the ice caps, we'll have an increase in the sea level, thus, harm we have coastal areas that will be flooded. Now, coral reefs they have to be at a certain depth so that the sunlight can be easily penetrated to the coral or can reach the corals easily. Now, once the sea level rises, it means that the coastal area will not be shallow anymore. So it will basically prevent sunlight from enough sunlight from adequately reaching the corals, right? So the corals will become will be submerged further under the water because of the increase in the sea level. The, the salinity level as well um to some extent it is decreasing remember the corals they need the right level right talk about the clear water 
um, <coughs> corals, they require clear water so that they can, um, the sunlight can easily pass through. Now, because of the, the, the land, the, the seas reclaiming the land, a lot of the water along the coastal areas are becoming muddy, right? And because of also global warming and climate change, we have a lot of acid rain. Now, acid rain is not something that is good for corals. So if we have acid rain, it's going to definitely damage the coral reefs. Now, we have other factors or we have other influences of climate change that will affect the coral reefs. These are just a few. So this picture is just showing you some of the threats to coral reef based on climate change. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see some. So what is happening is that above you can see um, the city emitting greenhouse gases into the air, which is basically contributing, right? Over here it tells you how you can help. And this is showing you the drastic um, effects coral reefs will basically face due to climate change. So as I said earlier, we have the warming of the ocean, which will lead to thermal stress. We have the rising sea level, which means that we'll have some deposition of sediments. And because of global warming, we also have our climate change. We have change in the storm pattern which means that we will have more stronger and frequent storms that really and truly the corals cannot um, fight um, much longer, right? So they'll easily be destroyed. So they have destruction of the reef structure, right? The changes in precipitation and the amount of precipitation that we will have will basically cause a lot of runoff, so a lot of pollutant from the land will now enter the sea where it will definitely damage the coral reefs and we also have the reduction in the pH level right so we have it will make it very difficult for corals to survive so within a few years right with the rate at which global warming is taking place at um within a few years most of the corals will actually die out right so we'll have a small percentage of coral reef living on still living in our seas because they said the, world, the um, ocean temperatures they're increasing relatively quickly so it means that the corals will basically die out quickly become bleached relatively quickly so once you're able to expound on these answers you should be awarded your let me see how many your 12 marks and once you're able to expound on the other information in, from the beginning you should be able to get a maximum of 30 marks we are at the end of this video thank you for watching and please remember to like share subscribe and turn on your post notification bell in order to receive more videos like these. Leave comments below suggesting topics that you would want me to present on. In the comment section below, comment the name of your school and the territory for a shout out in my next video. Until then, bye!